picture a 45-year-old woman. She wears a woolen sweater in midsummer because she feels cold, even when it's hot outside. Her face is slightly puffy, especially around the eyes. Her hair and eyebrows are thinning, skin dry. She says she's always tired, always exhausted, even after 10 hours of sleep. She's gaining weight, even though she has no appetite. This is the classical face of hypothyroidism. The thyroid gland is a small butterfly-shaped organ. It releases molecules called thyroid hormones. These hormones travel through the blood, attach to cells, and activate their functions. It's like a manager instructing workers to work faster or harder. When the thyroid produces fewer hormones, the whole body slows down and symptoms appear. But here's a question. Does every person with hypothyroidism have these symptoms? Or can some have fewer signs or none at all? If thyroid function is markedly decreased, certain symptoms are almost always present. These include significant, unremitting tiredness, cool, dry, rough, and scaly skin, and reduced sweating. There's a persistent feeling of slowing down. Daily activities become difficult. People often describe it like moving through thick syrup. An accumulation of mucal polysaccharides attracts water into the dermis, causing the characteristic puffiness, especially around the eyes. And the lowered body temperature makes individuals feel cold even when others are comfortable. Hypothyroidism is six times more common among women compared to men. In fact, one in 10 women over 30 is affected. So hypothyroidism is a significant problem among women, and the risk increases with age. By the age of 70, one in four women has measurably decreased thyroid function. The most common cause of hypothyroidism is a disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It means the body mistakenly attacks the thyroid gland, gradually destroying it over time. This happens for various reasons, including genetics. Sometimes proteins from viruses or bacteria resemble thyroid proteins. This mimicry triggers the body's mistake, leading it to attack the thyroid gland. Other causes are also possible, like iodine deficiency, which is common worldwide. But it's rarely the main cause of thyroid problems in Western countries where dietary iodine deficiency is uncommon. Additional rare causes include pregnancy, drug-induced cases, and congenital issues. To diagnose hypothyroidism, the blood level of TSH is elevated, often higher than 4.5. TSH is the hormone that stimulates the thyroid gland. It becomes elevated because it's trying harder to stimulate the poorly functioning thyroid. On the other hand, free T4 is low, below 0.8 nanograms per deciliter, indicating thyroid insufficiency. Positive anti-TPO and anti-thyroglobulin antibodies suggest an autoimmune nature of the disease. If both TSH and free T4 are low, it indicates a failure in the hypothalamus to stimulate an otherwise healthy thyroid gland. This means the problem originates in the brain, not the thyroid itself. Sometimes, Thyroid function is mildly decreased. There are minimal or no symptoms. Thyroid hormones might be normal, but TSH is elevated. This is called subclinical hypothyroidism. It's important because in about half of these cases, subclinical hypothyroidism progresses to full hypothyroidism within 10 years. Treating hypothyroidism is crucial because untreated, it increases the risk of atherosclerosis, high cholesterol, heart disease, gynecological complications, especially in pregnancy, memory loss, brain fog, and in rare cases, untreated hypothyroidism can cause myxedema, a metabolic collapse triggered by a virus or cold exposure, which can even be fatal. The standard treatment is levothyroxine, a synthesized hormone that replaces the deficiency. Usually, the starting dose is calculated as 1.6 micrograms multiplied by the patient's weight in kilograms. For example, a 70 kilogram person typically requires around 116 micrograms daily on an empty stomach. Take it with water. Wait around 30 minutes before eating or taking other medicines. Recheck serum TSH levels every six to eight weeks after adjusting the dose. 
then annually once stable. The target TSH for most adults is approximately 0.5 to 2.5 milliunits per liter and below 2.5 during pregnancy. Combination therapy with T4 and T3 or desiccated thyroid is reserved for persistently symptomatic patients under endocrinology supervision. Avoid skipping or doubling pills. Irregular dosing causes hormone fluctuations in symptoms. Take the tablet every day at the same time. Avoid taking the medication with coffee, calcium, iron, antacids, or high-fiber meals. These can reduce absorption by up to 50%. Maintain at least a four-hour gap. As we age, we typically need less levothyroxine per kilogram. During cold seasons, shorter daylight hours, and subtle seasonal shifts, pituitary signaling slightly increases TSH, usually by a small amount. This tiny rise is normal and doesn't automatically require increasing the dose. Now let's talk about foods that help maintain normal thyroid function. Iodine-rich foods are essential because iodine deficiency can lead to hypothyroidism. Examples include seaweed, like nori, kelp, wakame, iodized salt, seafood such as fish and shellfish, dairy products, and eggs. Selenium-rich foods support thyroid hormone metabolism and act as antioxidants protecting the thyroid. Brazil nuts, just one or two daily, are excellent, along with tuna, sardines, shrimp, beef, turkey, chicken, eggs, and sunflower seeds. Zinc is crucial for synthesizing thyroid hormones and supporting the immune system. Good sources include oysters, beef, crab, pumpkin seeds, chicken, legumes, and nuts. Some foods contain substances called goitrogens, which in very high amounts might interfere with thyroid hormone production. These include cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, kale, and soy products. However, moderate consumption as part of a balanced diet, especially when cooked, usually isn't a concern. Ashwagandha supplements have shown benefits. In an eight-week double-blind trial, Ashwagandha root extract normalized TSH and improved free T4 and T3 levels in people with subclinical hypothyroidism. A typical dose is around 600 milligrams of root powder daily. And so, by understanding these signs, causes, and treatments, we empower ourselves not just to identify hypothyroidism early, but also to reclaim energy, vitality, and control over our health. Because knowing the symptoms and acting swiftly means choosing wellness over weariness, life over lethargy, and hope over hypothyroidism.